Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the solemnity. So of all the days to pick to come to Mass during the day, uh, during the weekday, what a beautiful time to come. This is a solemnity. This is higher than a feast day. This is a day worthy of ice cream and cake and celebrating. Um, solemnity is one of the highest, and that's why we're using incense. That's why we have these candles lit in the back here to remind us of that added celebration. And it's the most sacred heart of Jesus. We come to this heart that was wounded for us and simply wants us to trust him, to trust that he really is as loving as he says that he is. So let's just ask the Lord for that deeper trust that we might go deep into the heart of Christ, who was pierced by a lens, blood and water flowed out for us. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Send to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on our keys to people of goodwill, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the heart of your Son wounded by our sins, bestow on us of mercy the boundless treasures of your love. Grant, we pray, that in paying him the homage of our devotion, we may also offer worthy reparation to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. He pardons
pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. A reading from the first letter of John, beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed, was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testified that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. So as I was sitting here just thinking about these readings, I was reminded of an image that I experienced in the beginning of my priesthood um, when I went to the Philippines and was there for three months. And that time was a very formative time because by the end of that time, 
I had been a priest longer in the Philippines than in the U.S. And so my, a lot of my formation of just being a priest came from that experience. And one of the things that I remember is um, in that particular part of the country, there was a huge statue of the divine mercy of Jesus, um, as big as a skyscraper. And there were these two um, uh, step, like escalators in a sense, not moving ones, but ones that where you would step up on each side of the rays and go up to a chapel, the very heart of Christ. And one of the ministries of the Marians at that time, it's a simple thing, but a very important thing, is every morning we would go and we would take a host about the size, about this size, and we would process through the where all the people were, and we would walk up those stairs, and we would enthrone the Eucharist right in the very heart of Christ. And I remember with all the heat and all of that coming, just by going up and going down, you'd have to take a break because the heat in the Philippines is like twice or three times anything that you've experienced here. And so it just wipes you out. But I remember seeing, it, this was a pilgrimage spot in the, in the Philippines, and people would come from all over that island they would be um, sometimes piled on top of the car. So if there wasn't enough room inside the car, you'd put 20 people on top on the roof of the car, and they would go all the way there. And there would be, I remember these little grandmothers with little canes, and they'd be on top of the roof. And I was like, wow, they're much more courageous than me. But then once they got there, they would climb those steps. Sometimes in the heat of the sun, these little 80-year-old grandmothers, and it would take them forever, and they would struggle, and they would struggle, and they would struggle. And then they finally got up there, and I remember once I was up in that little chapel area, which maybe just had enough room for two people, and I remember this little 80-year-old grandmother coming up, and she finally got up there. She was exhausted. Then she just threw down her cane, she knelt down on the ground, and she just started crying and praising God. And I remember just being in awe of that. It was just a heart totally open. She just did that for five minutes, as if nothing else mattered except for Jesus right in front. And then she, after that moment, she just picked up her cane, got up, went down the steps, and then drove several hours back home on top of a car. And I remember thinking about that, thinking, wow, this little lady old grandma, and I was complaining about, you know, kneeling and stuff like that, and she just like did all of that, and I was like, okay, I'm pretty much a wimp compared to that person. But why I share that is this reading here. It says, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. That little grandmother understood rest comes from the sacred heart of Jesus. She walked up those rays of mercy, and she just knelt down, regardless of whether the sun was out or not, whether it was convenient or inconvenient. And she just praised God. And it was worth probably a 10-hour drive just to come for five minutes and kneel and be fed by the Eucharistic rays of the Lord. She understood where rest comes from. And I remember another experience, also in the Philippines, in which we would walk down through these banana forests to the Pacific Ocean. We were right on the coast. And I remember getting down there, and I remember seeing this, this beautiful young woman with her little son. And they were very, very poor. They just, you know, basically had rags on. But she was singing just out into the sea. You know, it was almost like something like a Disney princess or something, just singing out into the sea. The 
this beautiful song in Tagalog, their native language. And I remember coming over because there was just such a, a, a beauty and a joy there. And I just said, excuse me, what are you singing? You have a beautiful voice. And her little son was just sleeping on a rock right next to her and she was just caressing him. And she just turned and with these eyes filled with joy, she just said, I'm singing a song to my Lord. And then she just went back and just started singing. These two experiences reminded me of many times those who don't have much are so much more richer because they're holding on to the pearl of great price. They know that all these other things, though it might make them comfortable in some ways, will not give them rest. And that's what the Lord wants to remind us today. He opens his heart, saying, you've been looking for rest in this place, in this place, in this place, in this place. And yet, just come to my heart. And even though it may be a struggle, even though it may be painful to... to to be in the presence of the Lord. Because our mind is racing and we, you know, we got to do all sorts of other things. And yet, like that little grandmother, we can find such amazing peace and rest for our soul. But we have to be willing to make that journey with the Lord. Because it's one of those graces, one of those gifts, that we're not going to discover unless we surrender to the Lord. The moment we surrender to the Lord, then he unlocks his heart. Because he says here, I share these things. I've hidden these things from the wise and the learned, but I've revealed them to little ones. And he says, everything's been handed over to me by my Father. He says, to anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him, to reveal the Father. And so the Son is waiting for our yes. The Son is waiting for that childlike aspect, which is the trust of a little child who's, re who's ready without any sort of things that get in the way to just throw themselves into the arms of the one that will always catch them. So maybe during this time of pandemic, of just all sorts of crazy stuff, maybe our heart's been a little bruised and hurt. And maybe there's struggle with trust. Maybe there's even struggle with trusting the church. The Lord gives you a grace today to just walk that road, even if it's painful, and just come before the heart of Christ, saying, Jesus, my God, you are my all in all, and only in you can I find my rest. And with you, I don't need anything else. Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now coming before our merciful Father, we bring our petitions before him. For Pope Francis, our bishop, priests, and all who serve the church, May the Lord strengthen them in their mission of bringing the light of Christ to a weary world. Let us praise the Lord. Lord hear our For civic and community leaders, may the Holy Spirit help them to lead peacefully and work cooperatively. Let us praise the Lord. Lord hear our For those who feel abandoned, unwanted, or rejected, may the compassionate love of God bring them hope, healing, and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Lord deepen our understanding of his love at work in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died in the light of Christ, may his sacred heart envelop them in his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Pray in a special way for all Marian priests. Pray that they might allow the sacred heart of Jesus to fill their own heart, that they might be able to serve God's people with the heart of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all the intentions of Our Lady's intercessory box, for all the intentions that you hold in your heart. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers and continue to answer them, giving us all that we need. We ask this through Christ, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, we pray on the surpassing charity of the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation for our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For, raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love, and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that one over to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. So, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zion in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zion in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thus says the Lord, let whoever is thirsty come to me and drink. Streams of living water will flow from within the one who believes in me. Just a reminder for the time of communion that the um, greeters will come forward and help assist you. I'm going to give you some hand sanitizer for your hands. I'm going to take that myself. And you're just going to come up individually, extending your hands like this to make a throne for the Lord. Keep your mask on the whole time. And then when you receive, then just go over to the side right here. Reverently, just take your other hand and open your mask. Receive the Lord and then place the mask back on and then you can go to your seat.
greatest prayer to act for spiritual communion, especially for those who aren't able to receive sacramentally at this time. My Jesus, I truly believe you are present in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart and embrace you as if you were already there. Never let me be parted from you. Amen. the sacraments of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love, so that drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we have adoration um, starting right after Mass until 11 o'clock today. So we do have two guardians. And I encourage also anyone else that is wanting to help us um, extend the hours of adoration little by little to um, be able to reach out to us to be trained as a as a greeter cleaner um, if you have that ability then you can take that that hour in the future and then that way we can continue to open up adoration to show that so that we can learn from the witness of the little 80 year old Filipina grandmother of climbing those steps and then being fed by the Eucharistic rays of the Lord so Let's really try to really ask ourselves, can we sacrifice for that one hour a week to be a guardian during this time? Um, and if that's something that you want to do, um, you know, please reach out to us and even let us know. You can reach out to Rosa Espinosa, um, who is in charge of our adoration committee. Um, and you can ask, you know, say, I would be free on this day at this hour, and then little by little we can start collecting those hours, and then we'll know how to be able to, to open up again. So that once we open up our adoration chapel in the future, then we'll, we would have already been doing adoration here for a little while, and then we can transfer over there um, when the time is right. So pray about that. I'll be available for confession from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Um, and we're going to do the novena to the sacred heart. Um, I believe, we'll have to just get that in just a second. We're going to do that right after Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.
Spirit. 